So Sue M does the kangaroos. Do you hear that? That's a howler monkey. We have howler monkeys in the trees here right now, and they're talking loudly if you can hear it. Oh, I'm sitting here having breakfast. I'm late getting anything done. It's not been a good asthma day. I am not going to very likely do any more recordings, at least until next week. I'm coming up on a really important doctor's appointment that I have to go to San Jose for. I'm having a hell of a time right now with my health. My um, blood pressure is through the roof. And my oxygen levels are very low. Um, thanks, Bliss. I hope that I do, too. This usually means, when I start getting these readings, it usually means bad asthma is on the way. And I'm nervous about this doctor's appointment because we're going to discuss whether or not I have MS. I'm sure that's that's where we're going to go with this. I've already been warned, so I'm kind of jumping out of my skin right now. Can you hear the monkeys? They're out there. They're really loud. A um, couple things. Oh, who called me? Somebody just tried to call me and apparently it never rang. Hey, yeah, this whole thing with you hear the howler monkeys. There's still a lot of stuff, real monkeys. You're right, real monkeys. And I see them. They come in my yard. They come very low down when I'm swimming sometimes. The mothers will nap in the strangler fig tree. I'll see the little babies. The babies are never wanting to nap. They're all over the place. They're so cute. A lot of times I'll cross the front of the yard here. I'll see them. They're going from mango tree to mango tree. Some of the males must be upset about something. So I don't really know for sure what that is, but I can relate. I can relate. I can relate. No, you can't, real. The thing with the monkeys and anything here, you're not allowed to keep wild animals as pets here. I prefer to let them go. I raised parrots for years, tons and tons and tons and tons of parrots through the years I've had and parrots, parakeets, cockatiels, you name it. And here I get to see them fly overhead in huge, huge family groups. And I love seeing that. I've changed my mind totally about ever having parrots as a pet ever again after seeing what a wild group of Scarlet Macaws looks like. I've changed my mind on that. So I'm actually kind of a little bit upset today. And it's more than just the fact that I got to go to the damn doctor on Monday and get my head scanned again. I guess trying to see if I have MS. Um, oh, you have bliss. I don't, I don't agree with keeping many things as pets. And this is me. I've done animal rescue for years. The problem with having wild animals like parrots, monkeys, whatever, really have to replicate what they do in the wild or you're cheating them out of it, out of a, a decent life. It's different with dogs and cats. It's very different. So anyway, wanted to say, I am not Sue M. I'm getting that all the time. People are telling me that Sue M and I are the same. The last time that I did a video where I said, that what Natalie said was crazy and that it wasn't true. I got a ton of people talking in chat that were fighting. And well, I don't even know if they're fighting, but they were saying some things and I can't even access it. I can't access it because I'm here in Costa Rica on shitty bandwidth and copper wire all in the neighborhood instead of fiber optics. I'm waiting for the fiber optics to come. So I just wanted to say gotten a ton of negative comments about that too. Sue M and I are different people. She has their hi old and pictures of the kangaroos. I can't give any pictures of monkeys right now because they're not close enough. But if you're hearing it, they're in the distance. You can hear them as much as three miles away. The males make that call.
I don't know. I don't know who would bring a monkey to where you're working. Oh, little teeny tiny monkeys. There are, that's not a happy monkey. A lot of times you will hear the howlers when trucks go by, when someone's using a jackhammer or a leaf blower, different things. You'll hear the monkeys carry on. And here's the funny thing that science has proved that I've just laughed over. That monkey noise you're hearing, guess who's doing that? It's the monkeys with the smaller balls. <laughs> the smaller the ball of the howler monkey, the louder the howler monkey. Science has proven there is a link between the two, and I'm not really even sure. I saw that reel. I didn't get a chance to see it. Like I said, I'm having I'm having quite the time with my health, with my everything just going haywire, and I don't even know what to tell you. I guess it's because I'm nervous about going to see my once and future neurologist because I'm nervous that he's going to say I have MS. I'm nervous that that's what the tests are going to say. I'm nervous they're going to do a uh, spinal tap. I don't do well with spinal taps because I have some scar tissue on my back and anybody that tries to go in there with a needle, it can be, it can be a really long, painful, horrible thing. So I'm not looking forward to any of this. And I'm just trying to get myself organized to go ahead and, and get to San Jose for these appointments and then fly out to see my daughter for the, her 30th birthday and get the COVID vaccination. I'm going to get the Johnson & Johnson while I'm there. So all of that stuff takes planning. So when you throw in the stupidity going on about the Nat, Natalie video and the allegations she made that were untrue, that some people are taking that and running with, and the different factions in the community, I'm just disgusted this morning. I'm disgusted and just horrified. I think I'm going to have to take a shower and a few, and just after that, I think I'm just going to have to lock myself in my sewing room for the day because I just can't handle this bullshit. It's just too much. Constant, constant bullshit every time I turn around. Ah, it's not a spider monkey. That's a howler monkey. We only have howlers here. Down south of here, they have the little spider monkeys. I should post a picture of that because I was livid when we had friends that visit and we took a tour. And I brought bananas and a couple of things with me as snacks because that's one thing I've learned. Anytime you go anywhere here, you bring a snack because you may not be able to eat a real meal. And um, I brought some bananas. The tour guide said, hey, can I borrow, Can I have a banana? I said, Sure. So I handed him the bunch. And next thing I know, he had cut the bunch up and he was luring the spider monkeys out of the trees with the cut bananas. And the next thing I know, I got a monkey on my head, a spider monkey. And I'm like this, not a happy camper at all. Um, why? Because here too, besides not being able to keep those kind of pets, you're not allowed to feed the wildlife. You're not. It's against the law here. They can hit you with a huge fine if they catch you. And that's what this dude was doing. He was luring the wild animals to come close to us with my bananas. And I was just not having it. But it only got worse from there. I went on the Crocodile River tour. And the guys who ran that were in love with the crocs. And they said, oh, this is my favorite croc. I call her Angelina Jolie because she's got green eyes like Angelina Jolie. He walked up and kissed he kissed that crocodile on the mouth. You know me, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so anyway, on that river tour, they kept feeding all of the crocs chicken. And the whole chickens that were given to him against the law. But that's how some of the more unscrupulous tour operators here operate. They will break the law. They will do whatever they have to do to get the tourist butts in the seats. And I got to tell you, it was a little off-putting for me having lived here a while and knowing that that's not how things are done here. Yeah, it's flagging people's videos nowadays. Yeah, real, I saw that. I listened to some of her video and then I listened to PJ and, and I got to ask PJ, why on earth would you say that Nat is too mentally ill to be believed? And then you turn around and believe a dumb conspiracy theory straight out of Nat's mouth. 
I say we just let all this crap go. She, well, Haley, she has adopted me. There's no doubt. I am her person. <coughs> you see, she's always on the bed. She's always right there at my elbow. And she's mine now. Well, she thinks I'm hers now. So there's that. It's, you know why you can't feed them real? I'll tell you exactly why. I used to think it was a good thing to feed them. I remember going to Arnall once and we went around the corner and there was a stack of monkeys taking food out of people's hands. And that was about a half mile after I'd seen the sign that showed a monkey reaching up to grab food out of a human hand. And I said, do not feed the monkeys. Um, it makes them aggressive. That's number one. They become very aggressive. People were doing that same estuary tour here in Tamarindo at the estuary and they were using chicken to feed the crocodiles. You know what happened? The crocodiles started biting the surfers. A surfer lost a lower part of his leg. More than one people have been eaten, bitten. Dogs get eaten routinely all the time. And that started because the tour operators were using the chicken to feed the, feed the uh, crocodiles. So when you see super aggressive behavior, just know that that has come out of people feeding them. Now, I break the law here, not just with my garden that I have all those American things growing in. I um, have a bird feeder, which is forbidden here, but I don't think that giving bird seeds bird, birds bird seed is a whole lot different than handing a crocodile, a whole chicken to get them to come close enough for the tourist to pet. That's the thing about Costa Rica. It's very tourism heavy. And that's fine until you live here. And then you're like, ah, I don't think I like all this stuff. Um, I'm not really a big fan of feeding any of the animals because of that. And I've talked before in here all the crazy tourist things, like the time I was on the beach and the wind was blowing. We were having the papagayo winds go through, and it was blowing the sand. If you were on the beach, it felt like a thousand needles. This person turned around and walked into the hotel and demanded they do something about the wind because it was ruining their vacation. And I'm kind of sitting in the back snickering, like, you know, the dog on uh, Duck Hunt, the old NES game. <laughs> I'm kind of back there because I'm like, you really think the hotel can control the winds. Think. Yes, I'm drinking my uh, awful Diet Cokes, which are so bad for you, but it's my last really big vice. So there's so many things like that. I tell people, come here, bring a pile of money. <laughs> bring a pile of money and be expected to be shaken down some. Give pushback on things like tour prices and things. They'll negotiate. Everything is negotiable here. Everything is negotiable. I tell everybody that. And I find that's true in life, too. You got one for birds. I love to feed the birds. I cannot give that. Oh, Haley, I now have two official cats. Her and Stinky. Pork and Stinky. And I didn't intend to end up with pork. Pork, pork picked me and moved in and is very nice. You know, the cast tea, I'm thinking about doing that. I am thinking very seriously about putting, I may buy one on in the States in a couple of weeks, putting a camera on the bird feeder right by it. Because it's not the birds you feed. We get crazy birds here that will come into the tree near the bird feeder, but won't go on the bird feeder because they don't know what that is. Um, especially... The mot mots. I'm looking right now to see if I see any mot mots. Mot mots are my favorite. They're these little turk, they're these turquoise birds, about yay big. But what's interesting is their tail goes down, and then there's a stick, and then a tiny turquoise feather off the end that looks like a tennis racket. And you'll see them because you'll notice they'll start wagging their tails. And then you don't see those very often. We also have magpie jays that are crazy, and we'll get into everything. 
So I'm thinking about doing that. I may do that and start posting those videos because of the bird life around here. And I'm trying to catch sight of the more rare ones. Like I know for a fact there's a black belt toucan. I've heard him a bunch of times. I've heard the cry. I've seen him exactly once. He was in my palm tree there eating a palm nut. I would like to get all of that going, but it's going to take me some time. So here we are, crazy birds. A black-billed toucan. This toucans are very large birds. I've seen those at R and All. I've seen them. It looks just like you know the toucan on the Fruit Loops. <laughs> you're looking at this animal. It's five feet from you, or whatever. You're going. How on earth is are those colors even possible? That's how I catch the mot mots. I was like a flash of turquoise going across the yard, and I'm looking. It's like, what is that? What is that turquoise? Turquoise, Claire Bear, that is the most amazing part about living here is seeing all of that. It makes days like today where I'm jumping on my skin because I'm having all these crazy indications that I've got bad asthma on the way. And I'm not looking forward to going to see the neurologist on Monday because I have a feeling the news is going to be bad. And you'll probably see me crying. If they tell me I have MS, I will be crying on here. I'll be sad fishing. I'll be so sad fishy. It's not even funny. But if I have to have a place to stay where I'm not feeling well, this is this is the place. Like I said, my bedroom is multi-part. It's large. It's comfortable. And I have a I have what's a, probably about a 15 foot picture window that my desk is pushed up against. Yes, see, someone is trying to. <laughs> someone is upset because I am uh, eating cereal and I haven't offered her the milk cast tea that was what happened here I had not ever seen a black billed toucan until the, the COVID happened and the same thing with so many animals I've seen that I normally have not seen anywhere I've seen some pretty amazing things since the lockdown happened and we're still not, we're pretty much open here because of the tourism, because tourism dollars makes this country flow, but the tourists have not blocked back yet. So I am seeing a lot of crazy things, big spiders. Oh yes, we get those. It's yeah. Claire Bear, it is. It's the little things it's, it's being in a place or I can just lay on the bed and look out and see those things is, is amazing. It's an amazing thing to be able to have happen. I, um, I don't know what's going to happen in the future, I guess. And see, she's coming up. You see her? She wants my cereal that I ate a couple bites of. That's the other thing. All of this, I'm barely eating and I'm not losing weight. So I don't know what's going on. And I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm just trying to eat enough to be able to take the medications I'm on. But unfortunately, she thinks she thinks that that means I have to immediately give her the leftovers of my cereal. The monkeys are not friendly. They are more friendly than they used to be. My husband can tell you, if I'm in the pool, they will get in the strangler fig right overlooking the pool. The mother monkeys will take naps and let the little babies play. And I love to watch that. And they'll come pretty close to us now. But I think it's because we're old, we're slow. <laughs> we're old and we're slow. I think that's really the reason that they, we don't make a lot of loud noises. Everything's quiet here. We're quiet. Yeah, but I, the mangoes next door are starting to ripen. They have the little tiny yellow honey mangoes. That's what they're after is honey mangoes. My avocado tree is loaded with avocados right now, and some of them are coming down. I don't know if monkeys eat avocados or not. Both of my grapefruit trees are full of pips right now. We're going to have a tremendous bumper crop. I love that, and I got to get the camera ready for that because the the um, parrots, the parrots come in huge flocks and eat the grapefruit. I seldom get grapefruit. I seldom get to keep any of the fruit on the trees because the wild animals take them 
and I'm not the type to rush around and try to take food out of a monkey's mouth. If the monkey comes and eats a star fruit or a, a mango or a um, avocado, I'm just going to consider that the price of living here, the price of having so many animals just at my fingertips and just being able to watch them. To me, that's the most fun. Casty, you're right. My allergies are much better here. There's no pollution. There's no heavy industry. I am a mile and a half from Playa Grande, which is a huge beach that's natural. When you see beach pictures here, when I post them up at the start of my videos, it's almost always Playa Grande. I'm closer as far as driving time to Tamarindo, but Tamarindo is, is like Panama City Beach. Very touristy. Every time you turn around, there's tourists and the other, and that's fine, but it can get old after a while. Playa Grande is a natural um, beach. It's a national park called Las Ballas, I think you had pronounced that. I'm not sure. It's the park where the turtles go and lay their eggs. It's also some of the most intense waves I've ever seen in my life. I've seen several expert surfers there that I never thought I would see in my lifetime, like L Laird Bear. I got to see him one time. I was pretty sure. Laird Hamilton, what am I saying? Laird Hamilton. And I've seen some pretty insane surfing and surfers there. Grande, though, has taken people down. I have a friend whose husband was out surfing, and they don't know what happened, whether he had a heart attack or he got stuck in one of the, um, oh, what do you call them, the riptides, because the place has some pretty gnarly riptides. When I go into Grande, because I'm old and not as, um, I'm not as swift on my foot feet, and I'm not able to surf anymore. At Grande, I will not go out deeper than my knees because the rip currents there are that insane. And if you don't know how to get out of them, and I know how to get out of a rip current. If you ever hit one and it's pushing you out, you have a couple options. You can either let it push you all the way out because it will turn at that point and then push you back in. Don't fight it. People wear themselves out and have heart attacks doing that. If you want to get out of it right away, you just keep moving sideways until you're out of it. And that's, that's really the thing you do. You move sideways. Most people, a lot of people don't know that. The information they get around, I don't know why. And uh, they, end up, they end up drowning or having a heart attack. So all of that helps my allergies. Things that don't help my allergies. People smoking, lots of cologne. Those are very common here. Fuzzy dogs. I have a real problem with fuzzy dog hair. I don't really know why. Cleaning supplies. Just all kinds of stuff, all kinds of stuff that I'm allergic to. And I have a crazy list of food allergies. Like, um, okay, so I have bananas in this cereal. These bananas are almost green. I can eat them. I can't eat an overripe or a perfectly ripe banana. If I eat a ripe banana, I start wheezing. It has something to do with the chemical changes that happen as it gets overripe. And I love overripe bananas, but they don't love me. Kiwi fruit doesn't love me. I mean, it's a whole long list of stuff. And so when I go out to eat, I have to ask 50,000 questions. You're not using peanut oil, are you? You don't have this and that. There's no cross-contamination. You haven't been using your knife on peanuts or kiwis or whatever, and then cutting other stuff without washing it. So it's, I'm just going to tell you, I'm being very frank today because I'm feeling so kind of downish. Living like this is a pain in the ass, and it's depressing and defeating sometimes. Last night, we started making plans to have dinner with a friend of ours tonight, a friend of ours. At their house, they said, come to our condo, and we can watch the sunset going down over Tamarindo. And I said, cool, okay, we'll go. Then she said, tell Suzanne to met up because I have fuzzy dogs. And I had to tell my husband, I was like, you better tell her. When says I had at church recently with that. So he messaged her back and she said, well, no big deal. I'll put him in another room. I said, you don't understand. The dander is already in the room. I'll be running around with my EpiPen hanging out of my leg. 
shooting myself up with injectable Benadryl, crying, freaking out, turning colors, the whole nine yards of when you can't breathe. Because that's the other thing with me is if I'm exposed to an allergen once or twice, I might react down here. And then the next time it might be here, the next time might be crazy. It might be crazy in ER time. So I really have to I have to be very careful about all that stuff. And it gets depressing when you have to put, and I started crying last night. I got very upset. I told my husband, I was like, fine, I don't want to go. I can't go. So we're going to meet at a restaurant tonight. And I don't know how that's going to go because I'm not feeling so great. And if anybody's smoking there, that's going to be a problem. I'm going to have to put on my N95 mask before, before all this happened. Well, before all this happened with COVID, and since I'm not going to monetize this, I'm just going to use the words, COVID fucking bullshit. Okay. Um, COVID, when COVID happened, I was masking before COVID. I was using an N95 every single time I encountered a trigger, and it worked. It works well. Get one that seals very well around your face, and it filters all that stuff, and it takes me from having to go to the ER to just wheezing a little and taking a few extra meds. COVID happened and I couldn't get any more N95s. They just weren't available. And there were times when I would wait on the website because I knew they were opening up orders at midnight or whatever, and I still couldn't get them. So I'm running around with the same old worn out N95s. I'm going to replace them when I go to the States. That's one of the things that is on my list of things I must do. I must replace my N95s. So that takes... Um, It takes them to it. Okay, sincere. Are the monkeys aggressive? No, the monkeys are not aggressive. Not to us. Um, I think if you mess with them, they're probably aggressive. I don't hear much about that. Most people leave the monkeys alone. You know why? Because some of the monkeys here have had such bad encounters with humans. They know that humans are their predators. You've heard the you've heard the tale of monkey slinging dung, bingo. I can say I've never been shot upon by a monkey or peed on. And I know a lot of people who have. So if, if you're irritating them, guess what? You'll get that. You'll get monkey poo all over you. And uh, they say it stinks. It's like why I try to stay out from under giant iguanas. Same deal. Iguana pee is the foulest thing you could ever imagine. We had a friend who the iguanas would get into his attic and pee and uh, it would roll down the wall of the kitchen. You're standing there in the house going, ugh. So we don't have a tile roof like him. We have a zinc roof like everybody else. Iguanas cannot get under that thing to pee down your walls. <laughs> it's the craziest thing living here with all that stuff and trying to figure that out. So the monkeys aren't aggressive. They'll only mess with you if you mess with them. They'll pee all over. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Monkeys can do that, American princess. I knew people with chimpanzees. When the chimpanzees got full grown, they could not control them. And they had to turn around and give them to animal sanctuaries. And, and yeah, it's not. But the one that makes me laugh the most, and I don't see my own yard because we're fenced in, but when I'm out and about of the Quatamundes, they're the little animals that look like a cross between a cross between a bear, a little teeny tiny bear, and a raccoon. Now they are adorable, but they have learned that humans need food, so they will run up to you and beg you for food at various places. And I'm just dumb enough to give it to them, even though I've said I don't feed wild animals. I'll feed the Quatamundes sometime because they are just adorable. And they're uh, little bandit robber guys that are insane. So it's kind of fun to watch them, especially when you have a huge bunch of them crossing the road or something. They can be really funny, really, really funny. So they've stopped. Yeah, I just hear the chickens. I hear all the chickens next door and across the street. Almost everybody has chickens here. Some reason in our little tiny village area, you see her. She came from the village cats. There are ton. There's a huge feral cat population, and they 
tend to go everywhere. That's who I'm feeding with the dry food from Costco because they are a really scary looking bunch. Before I started feeding them now, at least they look kind of healthy. They look much better. When I got pork, when pork first started coming around a year ago, she was super thin. Her goat was mangy. Now she's gorgeous. And we are now. She lives here in the bedroom and stays right at my elbow. She's my kitty now. I did not intend to adopt another kitty, but she adopted me. So there's that. The only other one of the strays is as bold as that is Scabby. He's as old as the hills. I can just look at his teeth and his fur and tell you he's just old. He's old, old, old. And he comes around every now and then and eats. I think he belongs to the people across the street, maybe. But his, his fur is all scabby. He's always showing up with motor oil and weird stuff on him. He's just, oh, nice to see you too, Rena. Rena Rue. So there's that. The other thing here is we have squirrels that don't look anything like American squirrels. They have a head just like a possum, a white possum head with the nose and everything. The fur on the body is like white tipped black. Then you get to the tail. The tails are rust colored with over tipped with white. And it's it just looks like somebody somebody decided to draw a squirrel possum <laughs> Squirrel possum cross. They're in the yard all the time. We see them. They're the reason why I cannot have any of the almonds from my almond tree. Because as soon as the almonds ripen and they start falling, I'm walking there trying to pick them up. And every single one of them has been chewed open by a squirrel. I give up. I guess I'm just going to have to declare this as an animal sanctuary because of all the crazy animals we have here. I see it's almost noon. I'm going to have to go. I I came on here to rant about all the stupidity still going on with the Nat video with everybody saying all the stuff about Nat. And somehow I've ended up talking about Costa Rica. Oh, Costa Rica. I love you. <laughs> That's the thing here. People who come with the idea that uh, it's going to be like a resort, like their visit here to a resort was. They're all out to lunch. It will never be like that. That is a resort experience. If I wanted to go to a resort experience, I would just go north of here to Las Catalinas and stay for a day or two. But I like reality. I like real life. I like weird experiences. So here we are, weird experience, where weird experiences abound. And um, I like that. And that's what I'm writing my Costa Rican book about. There are things that can trip you up before you get to that two-year mark. Almost everybody ends up leaving. More people leave than stay that have moved here. I know of a couple that had moved here just about the same time as us. They just went back. But then again, I knew that the wife never liked the idea of living here. So um, I am going to go. I've got to get cleaned up and ready. I am expecting a phone call from a television production company that wants to do a show about Gwen Shamblin and the whole way down workshop. Gwen Shamblin, Laura, I've agreed to talk to them. I do a lot of background provision for some of these shows and for different um, news orgs that will contact me and ask me about Quiverful and all of that. So I do a fair amount of that, and I have a feeling that this one's going to take a lot. They want to do a uh, special. They want to do a show on Gwen Shamblin, Lara, and the effect. The desert region of Mexico, Rena. That would be lovely. This is a desert area where we're living. All of Guanacaste is a giant desert, but if you're by the beach, it doesn't really bother you. If you're not by the beach, it can. You can go a long way and not see much in the way of vegetation, except right around the Tempesque River and some of the other rivers around here. But it's truly lovely. One of the things I love to do when I get relatives and friends that come visit me here is take them for a day to Santa Cruz. It's the nearest big city. It's not really big city, but it's a more major the thing about I love to take them to that is so they can see what the real Costa Rica looks like and how the real Costa Ricans live. Not just the resort town where everybody's running around with a margarita and um, 
eating seafood and buying whatever, but where the Costa Ricans actually live, I love to take people around to the tower that's a couple hundred years old. I like to go down to Nicoya. There's a church there that dates back to almost the 1400s. It's the first, it's supposed to be the first church in Central America. So there's all of that. That was the first expansion of Catholicism in Central America. And Catholicism is huge here. Huge. So, uh, no, I'm not famous. I'm kind of behind the scenes, Haley, just telling a really friend. But I got to, before God, I got to tell you one, one really funny, famous, quasi famous story. Okay, for almost the last two years, when I've been walking around Tamarindo, I keep seeing this guy. Look at him. At first, it's like, he looks familiar. Then you look hard, and it's like, he looks just like Mike, Mike Ermintrout from Breaking Bad. I kept thinking, he looks very much like Mike. That's pretty bizarre. I'm just wandering away. I found out yesterday that is him. It's the actor, Jonathan Banks. He is settled in this area after his house in California burned to the ground. So he settled here now. And I know about where he's, I know what neighborhood he's living in. And that just kind of made me laugh. He's here. Linda Lavin owns a, 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 a um, like a vacation home here. And so does Justin Trudeau. Justin Trudeau is just up the hill. <laughs> Linda Lavin is two beaches over, I think, but still with about a 10 minute drive. So every now and then you'll see famous people out and about and I will do a double take and then I'll say, no, they're, they're trying to have their privacy. I'm not going to stare. I'm not going to go up to them and say anything because I think that would be the suckiest part of being famous. I've concluded, I don't care a damn thing about being famous. I don't want to be famous. Unlike somebody I could mention. Um, it would suck. You would never, ever, ever. Oh, Rita, thank you so much. My yarn fun. I'm getting ready to go to the U.S. and spend it all. <laughs> um, it would suck. It would suck to be famous. It just would. I just can't see it. I Just the loss of the privacy. If you want to walk on the beach and think your thoughts, and every time I've seen Jonathan Banks, that's what he's getting ready to do or doing. Like one time I was walking out of Eat at Joe's and he was walking in. Like I said, I kept seeing him in the community and I kept thinking, gee, he looks like Mike Armand Trout. And it is. It's kind of funny. So it's just a funny, funny place to live. Get the surfer crowd here. That didn't have a lot of money. They're constantly scrambling for dough and working cash under the table. You got retired old timers like my husband and I. We've got a fair amount of savings, but we're not what you'd call millionaires in any normal stretch of the word. Um, and then you have people I know that, that I know they're damn good and well got to be billionaires or millionaires. And they're here. And I think they're the suckiest. They're the suckiest of the Americans here. They usually are. They just aren't very nice. And they think everything needs to be done their way, including not having wind on the beach. Um, I told this tale on um, my Twitter. I'm going to tell it here. I may have told it the other day. I don't remember. My mind's not that sharp. I have a friend who's a millionaire here, lives in a gated community, a gated community. I, I can't remember if it's run by Marriott or one of the big companies. And... He had a house built. It took over two years because nothing happens quickly here. I don't care what the contractor tells you. Nothing happens quickly here. Pure Vita is the thing. And so it's Tico time. So you have to deal with those things when you're doing your thing here. And if you get bent out of shape, you're going to be one of those people that goes back quickly. And we were saying yesterday, we were having a conversation and a good friend of mine is like, we are so much better off here. Everything is so much cheaper here. Everything is just... So different. There's no the fighting and the craziness going on in the U.S. None of it happens here. So anyway, my millionaire friend built this fancy house, built this fancy swimming pool. And I would guess, just from knowing the contractor used, he probably put every bit of $40,000 $40, in that swimming pool. Oh, he had Kim design it. It was quite expensive. And house is built and finished finally. Pool was built and finished finally last couple of weeks. 
Millionaire goes outside, takes one look at the pool and says, oh, no, that's not what I want. So without the pool ever been swam in by him, he's having it torn out and having a new pool put in. I just can't see it. And he acts like the 40K that it probably cost is the kind of chicken feed that you and I would tip somebody at a restaurant, like $10. He acts like that's not a thing. And I'm just kind of like, because for me, that would be a thing. I am just too tight with a buck. And that's how I've ended up where I am now. I'm very tight with a dollar. I'm, I try to be very frugal. I, if something to spend money on, it has to be something worthwhile. Durango, Mexico, you are right. That is definitely high desert territory. And we did look at, we looked at Mexico. We considered Mexico, I should say, and we didn't look at it. I really wanted Belize because U.S. dollar, various other things, but we're here. So, and I know people who pick Panama. Panama is nice. Um, there are people that, pick other places. I knew a bunch of people that went to Nicaragua and then Nicaragua started having strife and civil civil unrest and they started gunning down these the college students. This was almost three years ago and everybody I knew from Nicaragua abandoned abandoned their houses and ran. I don't know if they've gone back yet or what the situation is there. Because when I go on my Nicaraguan border runs now, I just, I walk through the building, I get everything stamped. I walk outside, then I go right back in the building and get everything stamped all over again. And I'm out. I don't take the chicken bus to um, San Juan del Sur, which we've done before. None of that. It has to be more stable before I feel comfortable going there. And it's kind of funny because the first time we went, I told my husband, I said, we should look here because they have lots with water, sewer, internet, everything. And they were only $8,000. $8,000. But what does $8,000, is that a bargain if you have to run because they're starting to um, detain Americans and they're starting to shoot college students who are standing in opposition is it really worth that kind of money? I don't think so. And don't even get me started about Honduras or uh, Ecuador or some of the other South American countries. I've heard good and bad of each. I also have a lot of friends who are ending up in Uruguay. They say Uruguay is good. I know at one point Colombia was trying to get all of us U.S. retirees and was giving us favored nation status. I don't know if that is still the way things go. The thing with the thing with all these places is um, you just, you never know. Things change. One of the things that I like about Costa Rica, there's very little violent crime. It's very safe here. Now, there's a lot of petty robbery, so you don't leave things sitting out because nobody will be able to protect them. I've had things missing here. Um, there's that, but there's no army. It's so expensive to have a gun here that almost no one does. It's very safe. It's just a very safe. And if it's not safe, they meet the pointy end of my machete. I have my machete. Okay, you guys, I need to go. I got to take a shower. I can't believe I'm still sitting here and it's like noon here. I'm like one o'clock. Give it up. I froze. Froze, froze, froze. I figured. Okay. In stream, let's end the stream, end the stream.